What is up everyone and welcome to some more F1 23 My Team Career Mode. Our reserves Last time out we were at we the USA Grand Prix the and despite the fact that it Let's looked like we might be on to score some good points pushes. there in both the sprint and the race, we ended up walking away empty handed due to an incident in the sprint race that put us out of the points and then a mechanical failure in the race itself. Now, uh, we are going to be doing the Mexican Grand Prix today and if we can score 14 points as a team then we will be making our way up to the 100 point mark which is the sponsorship bonus that we are gunning for and um yeah then we will be getting an extra i believe it's about nine million dollars at the end of the season so definitely definitely something that i'm hoping to get done by the end of the season if we can get it done today that would be fantastic okay, but we we'll do have, have four more races after this process. one if that doesn't happen we'll have now for the full next disclosure Prix. before we get into anything else there was an issue with the recording of this video, which I wasn't aware of until after I had finished recording it, right um, where basically the audio is slightly desynced with the uh, with the game. It's not super noticeable, I don't think, but if any audio stuff feels a little bit off compared to what you're used to in these videos, that's the explanation as to why. Now, uh, Mexico. It's a track that we haven't done in quite a while in this series uh obviously it was absent from the calendar in season two but we are back now for season three so it's been yeah about i'd say probably 40 plus videos since the uh the last mexican grand prix we did and if i remember correctly it did not go well at all it was probably one of the worst races on the entire calendar for us actually if i remember correctly so um yeah i don't have particularly high hopes for this one if we can score just a few points just to keep our momentum going i'll be pretty happy with that because we should have scored points in texas obviously the uh, the universe had other plans on that one but uh yeah maybe we will be able to uh top three Who to bag ourselves some good points here Ocon in mexico city Leclerc. however what if you go by session. practice alone my pace was not really here, there and As not the only that but i was really points. struggling on the exit of some corners to keep the car in a straight line just felt like i was uh i was punching it a bit too much you know what I mean? Um, you know, just just really sort of oversteery, really really hard to uh, to get the balance right. So yeah, I think it's going to be going to be quite difficult. Uh, like I said, maybe we can still grab a point or two, um, even in the the races where we're not particularly comfortable. We're still a good shout for at least about twelfth or thirteenth, uh, just on the the simple fact that there's four teams on this grid that are significantly slower than us. So yeah i think i think as long as we can have a bit more pace than maybe the alpines as well or something like that we should be uh we should be okay we should be on the road to glory we make our way onto uh onto to the track now for qualifying first lap on a fresh set of soft compound tires is a 159 not bad you can see that Sainz and verstappen were also in the 159s here so uh yeah hoping that uh I can uh, I can at least make it through. Um, we ended up going out on another fresh set of soft compound tyres, and we improved by about three tenths. We crossed the line; it's a 115.6. Will definitely be good enough to see us through to Q2, and in fact, it saw us through in P2. And I believe Dennis Hauger made it through as well. Actually, um, he was around where I was when we uh, when we were down in P9, um, and he ended up. Yeah, uh, P10, 116.0 for him. So actually pretty decent pace coming out from Hauger there. Meanwhile, uh, the eliminations here. Sergio Perez in his home race is out of uh, of qualifying in Q1. Very disappointing for him. He joins Sonoda, De Vries, Lawson, Fittipaldi and Albon in the elimination zone. Perez who, you know, in the previous race, he had an amazing time of things. He went from P11 to P2 in the sprint. And then I believe he got P6 in the uh in the race as well so um yeah looking like uh he was maybe going to get himself back into the uh into the championship uh now finding himself just uh just completely out of it so uh yeah very disappointing for him we do a 115.8 on a used set of soft compound tires i think it's actually going to be quite difficult to improve over that time even on a fresh set 115.8 is not a uh, bad time by any stretch of the imagination we're improving by about a tenth as we come into the final sector, but uh, it looks like we're going to be through anyway. We're currently running in P9. Also, nicely, looks like Dennis Hauger will be getting through. He's in P8 at the moment. Um, so, yeah, I don't think anyone else has to cross the line apart from me, and we can't knock him out no matter what we do. So, um, yeah, we're going to cross the line. It's going to be a 115.5 for us, which is good enough to see us through in P5. So, not quite as high up as we were in, uh, in Q1, but... Um, well, we just didn't get the same level of improvement that everyone else got. 
So I guess that's to uh, to be expected. Yeah, myself and Dennis Hauger both through P5 and P9, pretty good. Eliminated here were Piastri, Magnus, and Norris, Joe, Sargent, and Hulkenberg. Norris being eliminated in Q2 is going to be immensely disappointing for him. Someone who, you know, is an outside chance of getting involved in the championship fight, sure, but definitely has the possibility to. Um, he's going to have to have a absolutely sensational race now if he wants any chance of uh, of getting himself involved back in that championship fight. But uh, yeah, we will uh, we will see what he can do uh, from P13. We are uh, taking a five place grid penalty. I should have mentioned that before, but we are taking a five place grid penalty due to uh, a gearbox change. It's our fifth gearbox now. But uh, I didn't think that the one we were on was going to last even one more race, never mind five. But we shouldn't have to do another one, hopefully, over the course of, uh, of this season now. Uh, we come up to the line on a used set of soft compound tyres, and we actually do a 115.4, which is uh, really quite good um, for a used set of soft compound tyres. We'll see if we can get any improvement on that, but actually we can't, as it turns out. And so we find ourselves down in P8 which I was a little bit disappointed by. I thought a 115.4 would be good enough to improve from P8, but no. Um, Dennis Hauger only was able to get P10 there, so perhaps a little bit of a disappointing qualifying for us in the end there. But given where I initially thought we were going to be, I'm not it's too time to disappointed with that. George three. Russell gets Russell, a, uh, a P1 pole position in qualifying. Now, He'll be very happy with that, as that will enable sure him to hopefully fight with uh, Verstappen for the, uh, for the championship. Bottas as well, right in the mix. We have to remember that he is now a championship protagonist as well it's not just uh verstappen and russell uh the th the the three of them are separated by only four points at the top with only five races to go we could be seeing a, uh, a battle that goes down to the wire perez could be involved norris could be involved but uh it's looking like it's probably going to be those three guys are going to be the uh, the sort of main shouts you would say for uh, for the world championship but you know things can still change I think okay, mathematically, so no, I was going to say we're still in it. I think we're just about not still in it anymore. Um, but last race, mathematically, we were still in it. So, um, yeah, we will see whether we can uh, grab some good points in the Mexico City Grand Prix. In the 60s, Mexico City would be the season-ending race. That's no longer the case, but it is always a party in these parts. Welcome to the Mexico City Grand Prix. 2,285 meters above sea level, the altitude will test the driver's fitness and their engine's efficiency. 17 corners, seven to the left, 10 to the right, that make up a 2.6 mile circuit equipped with two DRS zones. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. George Russell will begin today's event in pole position. A very happy Carlos Sainz will start second. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Bottas, Verstappen, Leclerc, Gasly, Ocon, Stroll, Hauger, Oscar Piastri, Magnussen, Norris, Robinson, Joe, Sargent, Hulkenberg, Perez, Sonoda, De Vries, Liam Lawson, Fittipaldi, and Alex Albon picks up the last spot on the grid. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. Anthony Davidson is with us once again in commentary, which is always good news. And tell us about the strategy today. Give us some insights into how the big calls are made. Well, there's a lot that both the driver and the team have to keep in mind when going into a race. The tires, fuel, energy recovery systems, the list goes on and on. But I think the key to today's victory will come down to the pit stop strategy. Come in too soon and you might find yourself needing more than one stop. Too late and you're putting yourself at a disadvantage by spending longer on worn tires. All right, well, it doesn't seem that my race engineer has anything to say on this occasion. And uh, yeah, we will uh, we will see if we can uh, make it work on a one-stop strategy, medium-hard. seems like a lot of the guys around us are actually starting on those soft compound tires. But I do have to remember that all of these guys are people that didn't qualify in the top 10. Uh, everyone from Piastri downwards okay, didn't so qualify in the top 10 the because uh, obviously so I've had to, had to take a five-place grid penalty. doesn't seem like anybody else has, actually. I was kind of anticipating that maybe there would be more penalties than just mine, but uh, I guess not. So uh, yeah, that's going to be a uh, a bit of a 
a difficulty for us to overcome. Hopefully we uh, hopefully we're able to uh, work our way up the grid nice and quickly. We went from I believe P13 to P5 Superb at the start of the race in the, sure the uh, in the US Grand Prix. So uh, yeah, we'll see if we can uh, we can do the same thing here and uh, and try and get up position as the lights come on. And the lights go out, and we've had a good getaway compared to Lando Norris and also a few of the cars in front, including Dennis Halger, unfortunately, who, uh, yeah, he could not hold on to uh, to that P9 position off the start. He is down into P10 now, okay, um, although he is fighting me back, actually, but uh, we break quite late. We sail around the outside of a number of cars here, and we are all the way up into P7 already ahead of Carlos Sainz. We'll be wheel-to-wheel -wheel with him through the chicane, but uh, we just about managed to keep him behind on this occasion so uh, yeah that is six positions gained off the start another fantastic start for us and now we're diving up the inside of Stroll and Ocon I think actually locked up there and that allowed me to dive up the inside of him as well so uh, yeah we are down or sorry we are up into P5 a, uh, a wonderful start for us and uh, eight positions gained on the opening lap I am immensely pleased with that now let's see if we can continue holding on to the back of Valtteri Bottas and uh, and hopefully uh, yeah making a, a good go of things you can see George Russell is a long way out in front in P1 at the moment and then it's I believe Max Verstappen in P2 Leclerc is in P3 he's not really involved in the championship fight this season Ferrari not really shown enough pace at times although Leclerc has been up, right up there in the most recent races and actually looking very very strong so uh, yeah, okay. he, uh, he, he probably you. can't get himself involved in the championship fight, but he definitely could disrupt the championship fight um, by sort of challenging some of the uh, the other drivers on the grid. You know, the, the Red Bulls and the Mercedes. He's, uh, he's right up there with Bottas at the moment. As Esteban Ocon is going to maybe go for a bit of a look up the inside of me as we get down to the first corner. It's such a long run there that, uh, you know, I don't want to burn too much battery. But if I don't burn enough battery, then uh, I end up coming under a significant amount of pressure from the cars behind. And that's something you're going to see here, as Ocon has the DRS now as we make our way onto lap 4. Um, he is just significantly faster by the time we get to the corner. He goes a little bit deep, and that allows me to sort of sneak one back up the inside of him at the apex of the first corner. I'll so, uh, yeah, a, uh, a little bit of a cheeky move from me on seconds. that occasion. However, I think it will only be a matter of time before Esteban Ocon gets ahead of me. And after that point, I think we're just going to have to try and stick to the back of him using the DRS if we can, and then maybe go for a move on him a little bit later on. You can see that by the time he gets to the first corner, he's so far out in front that it is uh, just uh, completely trivial, basically. And um, yeah, we are, uh, as we make our way onto lap six now, we are down into P6. However, we will be gaining one position here because Max Verstappen, the championship contender, okay, clear. is out of the race. Really disappointing for him. And, uh, well, George Russell leading this Grand Prix. Him and Valtteri Bottas both have a chance to extend a significant advantage over Max Verstappen, which could be crucial at this late stage of the season. But we will see uh, what Russell and Bottas right, can do. Pushing, the player currently the running ahead. in P2, separating two Mercedes. However, with the DRS, I think it'll only be a matter of time before Bottas gets up into that P2 position. Meanwhile, we are gaining and gaining and gaining on Esteban Ocon, and by the time we get to the first corner, we're at least alongside him. He is going to try and dive up the inside and get back at us a little bit, but we will have the inside line at the next couple of corners. We squeeze him out, and that allows us to get back into P4 now. Now we're looking at Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari. He's having a ding-dong battle with Lance Stroll here. I don't know what position this is for. I think it's P6, but uh, it's not going to end well for Carlos Sainz here, unfortunately, because he becomes the second casualty of this race and retires from the Grand Prix on lap 11. Now we make our way onto lap 15 and Oscar Piastri is right behind us on those soft compound tyres. He's managed to make his way up the field significantly. He was down in P10 or P11 at one point during this race so he's had a, uh, a really great fight through the field and now he's going to try and make me his next victim as he makes his charge up the order but uh, when we get to uh, lap 16 you can see that he's not managed to do it so far. George Russell becomes one of the first drivers on the grid to come into the pits along with I believe Lando Norris is in there as well. So actually this isn't great for us because Lando Norris could potentially punt for a bit of an undercut here and Oscar Piastri, his teammate, has also managed to uh, make an overtake on us as we cut the track there. I was trying to make sure that we didn't collide with Oscar Piastri, and in doing so, we actually uh, we actually managed to uh, go over the track and uh, get a warning. So we have to be careful not to get too many of those. Because I was a bit worried about that threat of an undercut from Lando Norris, I decided to pit 
earlier than uh, initially was planned. We were meant to come in on lap 18, but I ended up coming in on lap 16 instead. Also to cover off Piastri and make sure that we can stay in a fight with him. But he will be on fresh mediums. We're on fresh hards. Of course, quite a few people doing a soft medium strategy here. Didn't seem like it was going to work out for us. So, um, yeah, we'll just see if we can stay with Piastri and, uh, and hopefully use the DRS to our advantage. But we're not going to get DRS on this occasion, of course, because... Um, we were uh, we were in the pit lane, so uh, there's no detection point here. It is simply a case of um, you know one detection point triggers two DRS zones, and by the time okay, that we get to the start the finish straight on the next lap, you can seconds. see that uh, you can see that Piastri is two seconds up the road, and Lando Norris is breezing past us. The McLarens looking very punchy. Clearly, whatever issues they had in qualifying have been solved. And clearly whatever we had in qualifying that made us uh, significantly faster than them has gone away as well because Lando Norris is now just trying to break away as quickly as he possibly can. Looking at Charles Leclerc now, I believe he's currently running in P2, I could be wrong about that. And he's had a spin there which has uh, sent him round and will enable both of the McLarens and also myself to go through. And you can see in the background there, we know what caution, that symbol caution. means and just in case you don't, I will, uh, I will show you what it means from my perspective as we got ahead of Charles Leclerc okay, there, flag, up into P6, red flag. and no a red flag please. has we'll been pulled. Now, it's what does that mean? Track, it means Dennis Hauger, who right hasn't pitted care. at this point, I think he was going to pit at the end of this lap, is leading the Mexico Grand Prix. He'll get a free stop a nice under the red flag, here. and that means that Dennis Hauger will be restarting the race in P1, and suddenly this has presented an extremely great opportunity for us to score some good points as a team we could potentially try and get a one two here if i can get a good start and dennis hauger can also get a good start off the line then we could be gunning for a one two here unfortunately i think he's going to go on to a set of hard compound it's tires to get back on so Let's make the best of this he's going to have a difficult restart here as the lights come on and the lights go out, and we've gotten away well compared to Oscar Piastri in front, certainly. He's had a difficult restart. Russell, too, but unfortunately so has Dennis Hauger there. Very disappointed to see that. He's already down into P5 from the lead of the Grand Prix, but he is going to fight me back into Turn 1. And I think we're just going to back out of this one a little bit so we don't uh, we don't make any contact with him. But we end up creeping it around the outside of him. We almost make contact with Gasly there, who's made his way up into P3. He also got extremely lucky with the timing of the uh, the timing of the red flag because he hadn't pitted yet either. So he restarted this race from P2. Um, we obviously were P6. We've made our way up to P4 now. Norris is another big gainer from that. He In, in between the strategy that he ran, which uh, enabled him to make a big undercut Brilliant. on a lot nice of cars, move. and going. also having a good start here on this restart, he's made his way up from, I believe it's P12 he started in this race. He's gone all the way to P1. We have gone from P13 to P3. Bottas has made up a few positions. George Russell, undoubtedly the biggest loser here, is all the way down in, I think, P7, P8. I can't tell if there's an Aston Martin behind Dennis Hauger or not. But, um, yeah, George Russell, who probably was odds-on favourite to win this race from the get-go, is looking like, once again, he's just not going to get that luck. He's not going to get those points that he desperately feels like he probably deserves at this point. And, uh, yeah, we are up into P3 here. So, um, yeah, we're looking mighty fine. It does look like uh, Pierre Gasly is probably going to get us back on those soft compound tyres. Unfortunately, it's an Alpine fighting at this position. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't care that much. But because I'm trying to get back at Alpine in the uh, Constructors' Championship, this actually is quite an important position for me to fight. Um, we just don't seem to quite have the pace to uh, stay with him on this occasion. And as we make our way onto lap 27... You can see that we are pretty clearly in P4 at the moment. Leclerc, I think, had a bit of a battle with uh, Lance Stroll, which uh, caused him to fall back quite a lot. He might catch up with us again a little bit later, but for now we don't have to worry too much about Leclerc. Bottas and Gasly have broken away in front, and it's just seeming like uh, just seeming like we're going to try and just cling on to this position for uh, for all it's worth now. If we can hold on to this P4, bring home 12 points. I think Dennis Hauger is currently running in P7. That would be another six points for the team. 18 points would be enough for us to break over that 100 point threshold and enable us to get that, that sponsorship bonus seconds. at the okay, end of the so season, which, uh, five, four, I mean, Dennis Halger at this seconds. point, I think he knows that he won't be retained for next season. His uh, services, as fantastic as his performance in this race has been, it's come about 18 races too late, I think. Um, 
you know, when I've been scoring consistent points throughout the season and he, uh, even now that we've got a strong car, is still barely scrabbling together sort okay, of P10 finishes, it's, uh, it's not really good enough. He is doing a good job right now of holding up George Russell behind him though, so I will give him props for that. If he can hold on to this P7, you know, maybe we can still try and have a discussion about Dennis Hauger's future at this team. As we make our way onto lap 31, you can see that Leclerc is really starting to close up that gap now. He's only 1.4 seconds behind. And uh, yeah, I mean, we could have uh, we could have more things to worry about yet. You uh, you never know. Maybe this P4 isn't nailed on. The good news is, if Dennis Hauger can stay in that P7 and he gets six points, we will just about make it onto the 100 point threshold. I think even if I even if I get P5 and he gets P8, okay, that's 14 points, which is exactly what we need for uh, for 100 points in the championship. So. Uh, if we can if we can break the 100 points gap this uh, this race, then maybe just maybe I will consider keeping Dennis Hauger at the team. I'll at least add him to my short list of candidates, but I still don't think he'd be my first choice. I've got at least two drivers who I'm thinking of who I would choose in front of Dennis Hauger, and um, I definitely will explore the opportunity to uh, to try and sign them first lap 35 eventually Leclerc does get ahead of us it's absolutely devastating uh, but we just had no pace to fight this with I uh, will try and fight him back okay, with a little bit of battery lap. and with the Let's DRS go. on the final, final lap. lap meanwhile Russell has eventually got ahead of Dennis Hauger um, so it's looking like it will be those 14 points only behind. unless Dennis Hauger can do anything with the DRS on this final lap Sergio Perez managed to recover from starting uh, I believe it was 17th he's managed to make his way all the way up to 9th okay, so he's had a decent Grand Prix but remaining. certainly not the one that he would have wanted here it doesn't look like Dennis Hauger is going to be close enough to overtake George Russell on this occasion but um, maybe just maybe he will be able to uh, get him on that DRS straight who knows it seems like we're not quite close enough to get ahead of Charles Leclerc here either so unfortunately we just couldn't cling on to these positions at times it looked like I might be even closing up to Pierre Gasly as his soft compound tyres no doubt are wearing out quite a lot towards the end of this race but uh, it just wasn't quite enough and it wasn't enough for Hauger either and I don't think he's going to be getting past George Russell on this occasion so yeah a, uh, a really really tough race we managed to make our way from p13 to p5 so we can't be too disappointed with this uh regardless of what happens from this point onwards but uh i definitely feel like we could have maybe walked away with uh, at least a couple more points than we ended up getting lando norris from p12 on the grid wins the grand prix and we're going to cross the line to take p5 the thin air makes this event a brutal one for these formula one cars but this team have done a fantastic job to make it to the checker flag and take a well-earned victory today Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today. What set them apart from the rest? I think we'll chalk this one up to a deft touch on the brake pedal. That's allowed them to challenge down the inside into the braking zones, and ultimately, if you do that often enough, you end up winning the race. It was great to watch as well, though, wasn't it? Forget strategy, forget tyre management. Who doesn't love a good old-fashioned scrap? Our drivers are making their way out for the podium celebrations and it's going to be McLaren picking up the winner's trophy. Congratulations to the entire team for that fantastic performance. A solid race from Lando Norris making up a absolutely fantastic 11 positions to take the win. Yes, the red flag did benefit him a little bit. Valtteri Bottas, I think, will be happy with P2, especially because his closest championship rivals uh, were behind him, even if Lando Norris, with this result, might get himself involved in the championship fight. And disappointingly for us, that is Pierre Gasly on the podium, bagging some strong points for Alpine and uh, making our job of finishing P6 in the Constructors all the harder. Valtteri Bottas takes the top spot. He's our new Drivers' Championship leader after today's result. So let's have a look then at the driver's standings. Let's focus on driver of the day, Anthony Davidson. Who do you pick? I think for driver of the day, I'd probably pick Lando Norris. He lived up to every inch of his reputation today, and I think he'll be going home quite rightly a bit proud of himself. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. Mercedes continue to extend their lead. Well, that certainly was an exciting weekend of Formula One. Be sure to join us for more exciting Formula One action very soon. Well, we have made our way onto exactly 100 points in that occasion, but what is more interesting is that with this result, Lando Norris moves just 18 points behind Valtteri Bottas, 
who, because of a poor result for both Russell and Verstappen in that race, has now taken over the lead of the Drivers' Championship. Could Valtteri Bottas win a World Championship? He wasn't even supposed to be here, you know? It was the shock retirement of Lewis Hamilton that caused Mercedes to call up their old driver once again. They said, hey, how about you come back and drive for us and play wingman to George Russell once again as he continues to, uh, to win World Championships. Um, you know, he won in 2023 he won in 2024 but here in 2025 Valtteri Bottas has said maybe I'm a little bit tired of playing second fiddle to George Russell you know George Russell he had a very strong start to the season but since then he's uh, he's really fallen off quite a lot he's been having a very difficult time of things and uh, you know that allowed Verstappen to get involved in the fight it's allowed Perez to get in the fight a little bit. He's only 25 points off the lead of the championship. You've got Lando Norris involved in the battle as well. There are still, I would say, five people who feasibly could compete for the world championship. Yes, uh, Oscar Piastri is technically still mathematically in the fight as well, but 60 points down on Bottas at this stage, I would say it's probably not going to happen for Piastri unless he has an absolutely blinding end to the season. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll have to keep our eyes on that. As for us, we've reached that 100-point threshold that we were gunning for, and that will be a big bonus for us going forward uh, into the next season. It will allow us to hopefully upgrade some facilities um, to accommodate whoever we end up signing, whether it ends up being Dennis Hauger again or whether it ends up being one of the other two drivers who I am uh, I'm interested in signing. I How about I reveal now who they are and you can tell me down in the comments um, of, the, uh, of the three candidates who you uh, who you'd rather have. So the two candidates that I am looking at uh, at the moment are Yuki Tsunoda, he's the big one because he's been doing bits in the Alfa Romeo at times, especially in season 2 he looked really really strong and I think he has the potential to help me win a world championship um, both drivers and constructors next season, and then the other driver who I've been looking at and hear me out on this one is Esteban Ocon and the reason for that is because he and Pierre Gasly have been doing an absolutely brilliant job in the Alpine uh, across all seasons and they've been a real thorn in our side every single time we've been competing with them for the championship so I was thinking to myself what better could we do than to take one of their strong drivers away from them if we're going to try and fight with them over uh, over constructors championships um, you know Pierre Gasly is a, a potentially an option for us too or we could just keep Dennis Hauger who knows? Either way, the next race, I believe, is going to be the Brazilian Grand Prix. So I am looking forward to that one quite a lot. But that is going to be it for this video. So if you enjoyed, please make sure you like and subscribe. And hopefully I will see you in the next one.